Praise the Lord. Agege people, I said, Praise the Lord. Nice to see you after so many months of lockdown. But now activities have started. Something great will happen in every life in Jesus' name. Look at the way you are clapping as if there's something in your hand. Praise the Lord. Today in our service, I believe the Lord is going to enrich your life. It will bless you. It will anoint you. And great things will happen in your life in Jesus' name. And from what happens in your life, you'll take the blessing of God from here and take it home. Everywhere you go, there will be blessing in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, because you brought your people together here, those online, and those in all the churches everywhere. We're asking, Lord, that today your blessing will touch every life and flow into every life in Jesus' name. In the heart, in the soul, in the spirit, in the body, in the family, in the whole church, there will be comprehensive and corporate blessing for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Be glorified in every life Amen. and do wonders in every life, even today in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A good amen before you sit down. We're coming to the Psalms today. We're looking at Psalm 31, Psalm 32, and Psalm 51. As we look at these Psalms, they talk to us about our experience in the Lord, about our touch with the Lord, our reconciliation with God, and the grace of God flowing into our lives. It talks about redemption. It talks about full redemption. And it is through what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. Open your Bible with me to Psalm 31. I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 31 verse 1 it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. You'll not be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Go to the last verse there in verse 24. It says in verse 24, Be of good courage. It's talking to you. It's talking to everyone. Whatever has happened, whatever water has gone under the bridge, is telling you today, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. And then we come to Psalm 32. In Psalm 32 from verse 1, it says, Blessed is he. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. Blessed is that believer. Blessed is the child of God. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And then he tells us in verse 2, it says, Blessed is the man. That's that same man again, the one who has discovered the grace of God and the one who comes into the kingdom of God through that grace of God blessed is a believer and blessed is the one that keeps on holding on to the grace of God in his life he will not let go he doesn't believe that only when you give your life to the Lord that's when the grace of God comes at every point every area of your life every day every moment of your life the grace of God is still there and such a man that is looking up to the Lord every time it says blessed is that man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity in whose spirit there is no guile it tells us in verse 11 right there it says be glad anybody going to be glad there anybody going to rejoice there be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart now we're coming to Psalm 51 and we're reading from verse 10. 
And here is the psalmist praying, the same psalmist that prayed in Psalm 32. That's that same psalmist now that is praying in Psalm 51. And he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And then he tells us in uh, verse uh, 15 there, he says in verse 15, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. You will show forth the praise of the Lord. And the goodness of God will be visible in your life, transparently visible every moment, every time. In Jesus' name. As we look at those three signs, we are looking at the message today, full redemption from reconciliation with God full redemption through reconciliation with God God is a creator not only a creator he has now become a redeemer he's the one that so loved everyone in the world he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life that God implied a redemption he planned a salvation he planned a reconciliation with, the, with him and because because of that through what Jesus Christ has done now we have redemption we have a present redemption we have perpetual redemption we have perfect redemption and it's a full redemption and final redemption and it is through that reconciliation with the Lord Jesus Christ or through the Lord Jesus Christ the New Testament explains everything this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 look at verse 19 2 Corinthians chapter 5 looking at verse 19 there is talking about the reconciliation we have the uh, redemption we have and the totality of the provision of the cross of Calvary for you and for me it says to we that means that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself everyone in the world anyone in the world here is the path of reconciliation here is the only way for reconciliation that God the mighty God and the holy God reconciling a uh, sinful man in the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and he has committed unto us unto you and I he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation it tells us in verse 20 in verse 20 it says now then we are ambassadors for Christ and though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled unto God it talks about it's not imputing our sin our transgression our righteousness unto us because it puts the righteousness of Christ he puts that upon us look at verse 21 in verse 21 it says for he has made him he that's God Almighty has made him Christ a Savior Christ the sacrifice Christ the sin bearer Christ the sin offering he has made him to be seen for us it's not talking about he made him to be a transgressor no he made him to be the sin offering for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him underline that that we why don't you personalize that that I might be the righteousness of God in him now because of that reconciliation with God because of that redemption and because of the salvation the conversion we have now the Lord looks at us he actually recreates us he actually makes us and we become the righteousness of God in Christ through Christ because of Christ even today and I pray that that experience of real salvation genuine salvation or in indisputable salvation will be in every life in Jesus name I did hear again amen, amen. As we look at the message today, full redemption, full, right, full redemption through the reconciliation we have through the Lord Jesus Christ, we're having three points here. It says, uh, point number one: recognition of life's resources uh, for faithful sins to become a child of God. You're not a sinner anymore when you're giving your life to the Lord.
Lord himself. He gives you his salvation. He gives you his righteousness. And you become, instead of being a sinner, a terrible sinner, a sinner walking in darkness, now you are a saint of God. And we need to recognize the resources of life for those saints of God, for children of God, for citizens of the kingdom who are faithful unto the Lord. Point number two is the revelation of the Lord's righteousness in forgiving souls it takes you up as you confess the sin as you forsake the sin as you push away the sin and as the blood of Jesus Christ comes to cleanse you and wash you and put you completely he makes you to be totally forgiven and when he forgives you as we had in one of the songs he puts those sins in the sea of God's forgetfulness and they're not remembered against you anymore now we have the Lord's righteousness the revelation of the Lord's righteousness in forgiving souls point number three is the restoration of the lost riches of full salvation you need to understand that when Adam fell and Eve fell, humanity fell, we lost quite a lot of riches, a lot of resources, a lot of things that came from the hand of God when he created us. All the promises and all the provisions, everything, we lost everything. But now, as we come to Christ, the last Adam, what we lost in Adam, he now gives, he now gives us in the Lord Jesus Christ, and there is restoration. It's not only that he restores your soul, it's not only that he restores salvation to you, but all the riches, all the lost riches, and all the lost resources, all the lost provision of full salvation, he now grants unto you, unto me, unto us, restoration of the lost riches full salvation we're looking at uh, number one now number one is the recognition of life's resources for faithful sins and uh, that's in uh, psalm 31 uh, look at psalm 31 we're reading from verse one it says in the O lord do i put my trust and it says let me never be ashamed deliver me in thy righteousness he'll deliver everyone today in jesus name look at verse five uh, in verse five it tells us in verse five into thine hand i commit my spirit O thou hast redeemed me O lord god of truth in verse one it talks about the trust in this verse five it talks about the truth of god and then we're looking at verse 15 it says in verse 15 now it says i commit myself unto you my times are in thy hands my times are in thy hands underline that in the plural my times are in thy hands deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me the Lord has delivered you already Amen. we'll see that deliverance and the Lord will put a song of deliverance in your mouth in Jesus name as we consider recognition of life's resources for faithful saints, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the trust, my trust. Number two, the truth is truth in my heart. And then number three is my times. Number one, my trust and hope in the Lord. My trust and hope in the Lord. Well, you trust the Lord. You have confidence in the Lord, you have faith in the Lord, and you have hope in the Lord. Whatever may be happening now, whatever might have happened in the past, there is hope that darkness will not continue. The powers of the enemy will not continue. All those predicaments will not continue in your life. There is the trust and the hope in the Lord. Number two, there is the truth in my heart from the Lord. When you keep the truth in your heart, and that truth is coming from the Lord, the truth of God will drive away anything coming from error or falsehood in Jesus' name. Number three, my times in the hands of the Lord. My times in the hands of the Lord. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at Psalm 31 and we're looking at verse one. Psalm 31 verse one, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. In thee, O Lord, not in idols, 
in thee, O Lord, not in occultism, in thee, O Lord, thee only in heaven, my God, my Father, my Redeemer, my Savior, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, let me never be ashamed, you'll never be ashamed. Okay, I say for myself, I will never be ashamed. You'll not be ashamed in Jesus' name. Amen. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Look at verse 2. It tells us in verse 2, it says, Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. An house of defense. All that God needs to do with the armies of heaven to defend your life and defend your soul and defend everything you have everything he has given you it will defend you in jesus name and then verse 3 it tells us in verse 3 it says for thou art my rock thou art my rock you are my rock in the present time in this particular day you are my rock and my fortress therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me every moment of your life it will lead you yeah. every moment of your life it will guide you but that is on the basis you're having confidence in the Lord. On the basis you trust the Lord. On the basis your faith is firm in the Lord. And if that happens, and I know that will happen. Every crossroad you trust the Lord. Every challenge you trust the Lord. And every moment in your life you trust the Lord. You will never be ashamed. You will always have a testimony. I will always have a testimony. Look at Psalm 71 in verse 5. Psalm 71 verse 5, it tells us here, it's talking about the confidence and the trust he has in the Lord and the hope he has in the Lord. For thou art my hope. Money is not my hope. Thou art my hope neighbors are not my hope thou art my hope and the people in community they are not my hope thou art my hope what people are saying or what they are not saying that's not my hope thou art the god of heaven my savior my redeemer my shepherd the all in all in my life thou art my hope oh lord god thou art my trust from my youth thou art my trust from my youth praise the lord for those young people that believe the lord from their youth all the things that the adults and daddies and mommies have gone through of the heartaches and headaches of life they will not be in the life of our youth in jesus name it is the hope of your from your youth and then he says in verse 6 it tells us in verse 6 by thee have i been holding up from the womb thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels my praise shall be continually of thee and then he says in verse 7 have you read verse 7 before look at this i am i said i am i said i am not that i was not i will be but today i am every moment of my life i am somebody there tell me aloud i am, I am as a wonder unto many as we are getting older you are a wonder unto many when there are challenges you'll be a wonder unto many when other people are running elter skelter and they do not know what to do as you and firm and courageous and confident in the Lord and the blessings of God are flowing into your life you'll be a wonder unto many in Jesus name your old classmates will hear about you they'll say ah is that so and so they're still looking at you know at that time uh, when you are like a little thought and you didn't know what to do but now they wonder at you your teachers at school they wonder at you and your parents in the village they wonder at you is that not the child of so and so uh -uh, this one is more than the child of so and so this one is the child of god protection upon him and the purity of god in his life and all the goodness of god in your life you will be a wonder unto many in jesus name 
but thou art my strong refuge he'll be your strong refuge in jesus name L look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says let my mouth be filled with thy praise no curse from your mouth no regrets from your mouth no mourning from your mouth and no nothing whatever that is negative your mouth will be filled with the praise of god and with thine honor all the day that's number one my trust and hope in the lord you know if you just put total trust and hope in the lord from today you'll never be ashamed in jesus name and let's come to point number two that's the truth in my heart from the Lord. In Psalm 31, I'm reading from verse 5. In Psalm 31, verse 5, it says, Into thine hand I commit my spirit. You remember those were the words of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Into thy hands I commit, I commit my spirit, and that should be your own word be what you believe and what you stand for every time that whatever is happening you say lord i commit all this in your hand lord i commit my heart i commit my destiny i commit my past i commit my present i commit everything in your hand into thine hand i commit my spirit thou hast redeemed me thou hast ransomed me thou hast saved me thou hast forgiven me thou hast taught my life around O Lord God of truth, O Lord God of truth, you keep the truth of the word of God and the truth of the gospel, you keep that in your heart all the time. Why? Because it's that truth we're saved. It's through that truth we're sanctified. It's through that truth we're filled with the Holy Ghost. It's through that truth we have faith because it says faith cometh by the word of God. And as you keep that truth in your life, you keep that truth everywhere you go and you are abiding and you are standing by that truth of the word of God, you'll always be on the victory side in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 86. In Psalm 86 verse 11, it tells so Psalm 86, looking at verse 11, it says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. I will walk in thy truth. You see, these are people, the people who make up their minds at the time when I'm alone, I'll walk in your truth. And when I'm with other people, I'll walk in your truth. Whatever other people do, whatever other people say, however other people are walking, and whatever it is, uh, you know, they're leading their lives, I make up my mind, others may, but I will not. I will stand on your word. I will stand on your truth truth and at the time of planning marriage i will walk in thy truth at the time of wedding i will stand in thy truth at the time of children i will walk by the truth everywhere i go whatever decision i'm taking i'm walking by the truth of the word of god teach me thy way O oh lord i will walk in thy truth look at this unite my heart to fear thy name Unite my heart to reverence thy name. Unite my heart to honor thy name. Unite my heart to always think about you. That if I did that, how will God, how will God think? And what will God say? And every time you are walking, every time you are living by the word of the Lord, because you are saying, let my heart be so united with your word, I will name he tells us in verse 12 in verse 12 there he says i will praise thee i will praise thee other well, people are asking question why pandemic why this one why that one never in i will praise the lord somebody there you praise that is awesome it says in all things you praise the lord for this is the will of god concerning you that whatever is happening any noise you don't understand any side does inside you don't understand whatever is happening behind you whatever is happening in front of you whatever is happening around you whatever is happening in your family the praise of god will drive away the power of the enemy in jesus name that's what paul and 
and Silas did, they didn't understand how could this happen that they put all this on us and they beat us mercilessly as if we were criminals and then they were put in the dungeon, no light in the dungeon, but all the same they will praise the Lord all the same in your life, you will praise the Lord all the same in my life i will praise the lord and when you praise the lord like that you know when they were praising the lord the foundation of the prison was shaking all the foundation of your prison will be shaking in jesus name all the stalks and everything that bound them all the chains were destroyed every chain in your life is destroyed in jesus name uh, but you know there are people that wait they say i cannot praise god now look at what is happening i cannot praise god and look at the condition of my life jesus came to the grave of lazarus he had not even prayed and he said roll away the stone and the whole place was stinking and then he looked up and said father i thank you father i thank you somebody there father i thank you the man was still in the grave and then after he said father i thank you i know you always hear me and then he looked at that job he said lazarus come forth whatever you say after you praise the lord and after you thank the lord god is going to confirm the word in your mind i will praise thee O lord my god with all heart i will glorify thy name for how long I will glorify thy name, somebody there, for how long? Forevermore. You'll keep on praising the Lord in Jesus' name. And let's come to number three there. My times in the hand of the Lord. My times in the hand of the Lord. I want you to understand that, uh, you know, it says my times. Look at uh, Psalm 31. We're looking at the first line in verse 15. Psalm 31, verse 15. My times are in thy hand my times are in thy hand what did he mean by that already the psalmist has said from the time i was in my mother's womb you were thinking of me you were planning for me and you took me out of my mother's womb and then he, he had already said if you have if you are following what we're reading he said from the days of my youth of my youth you have been with me and when he said my times are in thy hands he's talking about the time of my childhood even before i knew you you knew me and the time of my youth and the time of my adulthood and the time as i'm growing older and then when it comes the time to depart and to leave this world my time will still be in your hand in a time of trouble my time is in your hand in a time of pain my time is in your hand in the time of affliction my time is in your hand in the time of sickness my time is in your hand in the time when i'm about to go now at the time of old age my time is in your hand and then on the day of departure the lord will not leave you when you are about to cross over and cross what they say river jordan the lord will be by your side he says i will never leave you i will never forsake you so you may boldly say the lord is my helper i will not fear what man shall do unto me your time from now on your days from on your moments from now on all the various moments that you live on earth until you see the lord face to face the time will be in the hand of the lord in jesus name and look at some facts one we're reading from psalm 37 we're looking at verse 39 in psalm 37 verse 39 look at what is saying it says but the salvation of the righteous is in the is of the lord and then it says he is their strength look at this look at this he is their strength tell me i can't hear my people's voice he is their strength in the time of trouble. He says, don't forget, my times are in thy hand. In the time of trouble, that time is your hand, and you will do what is best for me. Look at verse 40 there. It says in verse 40, and the Lord shall help them, and 
deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him look at isaiah chapter 26 when looking at verse 17 isaiah chapter 26 reading from verse 17 it says like a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery in it is in pain that's the time of pain now the time of pain in the time of your pain that time will be in the hand of the lord that time will not extend beyond the period you are able to bear in jesus name and cries out in her pants so have we been in thy sight oh lord look at verse 20 in verse 20 it tells us come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment that time of pain that time of pants that time of affliction will be a little moment and as you shut your door and you remember my time are in thy hands O oh lord that indignation will pass away that wrath will pass away that pain will pass away and the lord will deliver you completely in jesus name it says for a little moment come into your chamber and pray to the lord until the indignation be overpassed look at uh, we're looking at jeremiah chapter 15 verse 11 in jeremiah chapter 15 verse 11 it's talking about another kind of time now in uh, jeremiah chapter 15 verse 11 the lord said verily certainly without any shadow of doubt it shall be well with the remnant it shall be well with thy remnant the, it says verily i will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time what time in the time i said what time in the time of evil and in the time of affliction your enemies will not rejoice over you the enemies will entreat you and they will plead with you they'll bow before you because they know that the lord is on your side in the time of evil in the time of affliction the presence of the lord will be with you what will happen what will happen in the time of evil what will happen in the time of affliction look at verse 21 there in verse uh, in verse 21 it says and i will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked amen. you lost your amen there yeah. and i will redeem thee out of the hands of the terrible yeah. you know somebody is introducing himself and he says have you heard about me before say but who are you he said well if you forget my first name or my second name understand this anywhere i go people fear me i am mr terrible god will deliver you from the hand of mr terrible in jesus name no matter their terror no matter where they're coming from no matter what they have in their hand no matter what they throw at you the lord said i will and when god says i will he will i said he will even today he will in your life in jesus name i will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and i will redeem thee out of the hand of mr terrible Amen. and look at look at hebrews chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 16 hebrews chapter 4 we're looking at verse 16 here it says let us therefore come boldly how do we come to god let us therefore come boldly how do we come at the time of prayer let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help what time now in the time of need all the times that you have in the time of need the lord himself he will deliver you and the lord will be with you all the promises of god in your life will be yes and amen in jesus name amen. and we're looking at psalm 71 verse 9 psalm 71 we're looking at verse 9 he's talking about the time another time now he says cast me not off in the time of old age in the time of old age so 
some of us are becoming older and older in fact everybody is older today than you were five years ago and as you increase in age the lord will not cast you away he will not cast your prayer away he will not cast your crying and your shouting unto the lord he will not cast you away in jesus name cast me not up in the time of old age forsake me not when my strength faileth when you walk a little and you want to rest and when you run a little and you want to sit down and when it appears your strength is failing new strength will come Amen. supernatural strength will come Amen. power will come from on high because it says as i'm getting older it says forsake me not when my strength faileth look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says i will go in the strength of the lord god i will he will give me something more than human strength and something more than my personal strength and something more than the strength i even had when i was younger because at this time of old age now i will go in the strength of the lord God, I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 4, we're looking at verse 6, 2 Timothy, we're looking at chapter 4, verse 6, it says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time, here's another time now, and the time of my departure is at hand. The time of my going, passing on, it says that time is near, and the Lord said, all your times from childhood until old age, until when your strength is failing, and until you are passing on to glory, it says, for the time of my departure is at hand all the times of your life all the seasons of your life all the periods of your life the lord will be with you in jesus name he tells us in verse 18 the second timothy chapter 4 looking at verse 18 he says and the lord shall deliver me and the lord shall deliver me i'm talking about myself Paul is gone, Paul is gone, you are the one there now, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and shall preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to him the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, the Lord will fulfill that in your life, in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two is the revelation of the Lord's righteousness in forgiving souls. We're coming to Psalm 32. In Psalm 32, I'm reading from verse 1. It says in verse 32, verse 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man. Favored is the man. Happy is the man. Fortunate is the man. It says, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And then he tells us in verse 2, in verse 2 it says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God, in whose mind there is no girl in whose mouth there is no girl in whose conversation there is no girl blessed is that man that's a believer that's a safe soul that's a sanctified soul that's a person that has come to the lord and the lord has set him free blessed is the man unto whom the lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no girl we're looking at three things there. number one imputation number two impartation number three implication number one the imputation of his righteousness to the penitent when we are sorry for what we've done when we repent of what we've done wrong when we are penitent and sorrowful when we humble ourselves before god when we turn away from the darkness of sin and we turn to the light of his salvation the penitent there is the imputation of his righteousness to the penitent number two is the impartation of his righteousness to the purified it doesn't only really pardon us 
he doesn't only forgive us he, he sets us free he takes the power of sin he breaks the power of cancel sin and he puts his righteousness in us the impartation of his righteousness to the purified now the implication of his righteousness in his people when he put righteousness in us he gives us the mind of christ he gives us the character of christ he gives us the life of christ he gives us the victory of christ he gives us the triumph of christ what's the implication in our lives when the lord gives us his own righteousness number one is the imputation of his righteousness to the penitent we're coming back to psalm 32 verses 1 and 2 blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered and then in verse 2 says blessed is the man unto whom the lord imputeth not iniquity in whose spirit there is no girl and let's look at what the new testament says about this that he has now given us this freedom and he has blessed us with this forgiveness he has blessed us with this righteousness now let's look at romans chapter 4 in romans chapter 4 we're looking at verse 5 romans chapter 4 look Looking at verse 5, the same thing we have read in the Psalms, it said, But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith, his trust, his confidence in God is counted for righteousness. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, Even as David also describes the blessedness of the man. It's talking about what, what we just read now in Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. It says, David describes the righteousness of the man, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works. And then he tells us in verse 7, in verse 7 it says, In blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. But what do we do? How do we have that? How do we have that forgiveness of the Lord? How do we have all the sins we ever committed, blotted out? taken away and it's not counted it's not put to our charge anymore we're looking at proverbs chapter 28 and we're reading from verse 13 proverbs chapter 28 reading from verse 13 it says he that covereth his sin shall not prosper this explains to us now it's not just saying well god will overlook and god will forgive you have something to do you have to be repentant you have to be penitent you have to turn away from the sin and it is when you turn away from the sin the lord will say okay i'll cover your sin if you try to cover it yourself without repentance you're hiding it you're covering it like adam and eve try to cover up with fig leaves and you're using another lie to cover the previous lie he that covereth his sins shall not prosper but look at this the penitent look at this the repentant it says but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them whoso confesseth and forsaketh them is not enough to say like saul i have sinned confession without forsaking that does not bring the mercy of god it is not enough to say like pharaoh i have sinned you must confess and forsake he that forsaketh he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have the mercy of god mercy for everyone forgiveness for everyone cleansing for everyone and the power to forsake all the sins we have confessed unto god that power to forsake the lord grant unto us in jesus name we're looking at isaiah chapter 55 and we're reading from verse 6 isaiah chapter 55 and we're looking at verse 6 seek ye the lord while he may be found 
call ye upon him while he's near look at this ledge the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts that's being penitent that's repenting and it is when you are penitent like that when you repent like that and sincerely from the depth from the bottom of your heart you turn away from every form of sin it says let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon somebody shout an amen, amen. He imputes the righteousness unto us when we turn away from our sin. Nothing in my hand am I bring. Only to the cross I cleanse. The blood that is shed on the cross of Calvary will avail for everyone that turns away from sin and turns to the Lord. And then he imparts his righteousness unto us. Not just that he takes our sin from us, he gives us his own righteousness. And let's come back to Psalm 32 and we're looking looking at verse 2 psalm 32 reading from verse 2 it says in verse 2 blessed is the man unto whom the lord imputeth not iniquity in no spirit there is no girl and then we come to the romans romans chapter 4 we're reading from verse 22 romans chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 22 it says in verse 22 therefore it was not it was imputed to him for righteousness now in verse 23 verse 23 says now it was not written for his sake alone we've read about abraham and we've read about David, we've read about Isaiah, we've read about all these of old that the Lord forgave their sin and the Lord took away the presence of sin, the pollution of sin, the punishment of sin and the power of sin away from them. And he's saying it is not just for them only, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. In verse 24, it now assures us but for us also, praise the Lord for you also. I said, praise the Lord for me also, for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, as we not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he takes our sin away and he gives us his own righteousness in verse 25 he says who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification raised again for our justification it tells us in romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 we're looking at verse 6 there what christ has now done the impact of his righteousness the grace he gives us now and makes it possible for us to live in righteousness knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed the nucleus of sin might be destroyed the generating power of sin destroyed in your life yeah. I didn't hear your good amen yeah the origin of sin the very body of sin and and the sin that carries sin and produces sin in our life that body of sin destroyed that henceforth that henceforth the moment you meet the lord that henceforth the moment you are redeemed that henceforth the moment he takes away your sin and he puts his righteousness into you that henceforth we should not serve sin you will not continue in sin sin will not continue with you it tells us in verse 18 look at verse 18 there it says being then made free from sin in partition made free from sin he imparts his righteousness unto us being made free from sin he became the servants of righteousness the servants of righteousness and look at verse 22 there 
in verse 22 he tells us again that now that we are made free from sin in verse 22 being now made free from sin and become servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life that's mine I said that's mine imparted unto you in Jesus name we have seen the imputation of righteousness it counts as righteousness on our record it charges that to our account it takes us it's a great exchange it takes our sin from us he knew no sin and then he passes his righteousness unto us that's the imputation and now the impartation he actually makes us righteous because of the sacrifice on the cross of calvary what's the implication of all that the imputation the impartation coming together in the believer's life what is the implication we're coming back to psalm 32 and we're looking at the second part of verse 2 psalm 32 we're looking at the second part of verse 2 it says in whose spirit there is no god in no spirit there is no god in no spirit there's no deception in no spirit there is no hypocrisy in no spirit there is no lie in whose spirit there is no evil the implication of the righteousness of christ in our lives is that anywhere we are transparently behind the coaching outside in the public in the private and then with the people anywhere we are if that imputation has taken place if that impartation has taken place the implication of that in our life is that there is no girl there is no evil there is no hypocrisy there is no insincerity there is no pretense there is no secret sin there is no evil because he so puts his righteousness on us that the life of christ is reproduced in us look at romans chapter 13 verse 10 in romans chapter 13 reading from verse 10 he tells us love walketh no ill to his neighbor Love walketh no ill to his friend. Loveth a glove walketh no ill to his enemy. Love walketh no ill to any member of the church. Love walketh no ill to ministers in the church. Love walketh no ill to the companion. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law there's no ill there is no evil it tells us in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 here it tells us in verse 5 it says it does not behave itself unseemly he seeketh not her own is not easily provoked he sinketh no evil that's the implication that he has put his righteousness on us he has imparted his righteousness in us because of that now that believer that child of god in whose spirit there is no guile in no spirit there is no thought of evil there is no plan to do evil and there is no project of evil there is no habit of evil and there is no intention of evil he thinketh no evil that's the implication and then he tells us in first peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 i'm reading here from verse 10 in first peter chapter 3 looking at verse 10 it says for he that will love life he that will love eternal life he that will love spiritual life he that will love eternal life he that will love life at its best he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil look at this and his leaves that they speak no girl in his heart no girl in his mind no girl in his habits no girl 
in his interaction with anybody anyone there is no girl in his intention in his projection everything that he does there is no girl he doesn't premeditate evil he doesn't premeditate lying he doesn't premeditate hypocrisy some premeditate i'm going to do this evil thing in whose spirit there is no girl he says and his leaves that they speak no girl it tells us in revelation chapter 14 revelation chapter 14 and we're reading here from verse 4 is talking about the people that follow the lamb and the people that will be with the lamb these are the people that have the righteousness of christ imputed unto them these are the people that have the righteousness of christ imparted unto them and they have the implication of that in their lives no evil no sin they're spotless there's no spot it tells us in revelation chapter 14 verse 4 it says these are they which were not defiled women for they are virtues it says these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever and then it says these were redeemed from among men these were saved from among men these were cleansed from among men these were the people that have the touch of the lord the triumph of the lord the transformation in the lord and now there is real righteousness in them they were redeemed from among men it says they are the first fruits unto god and unto the lamb look at verse 5 in verse five it says and in their mouth was found no girl this are going to get to heaven in their heart in their mind in their spirit in their mouth was found no girl while they were on earth here and they were professing salvation while they were on earth here and they were testifying the of God is imputed unto me and they were testifying and bearing witness that the righteousness of God had been imparted unto them and they were testifying that they belong to the Lord at that time on earth before he can get to heaven in their mouth was found no girl for they are without fault before the throne of God that's what the Lord does for us you come to the Lord in repentance you come to the Lord in penitence and then he imputes righteousness unto you and then you come for another a time to have more grace in your life and imparts righteousness unto you and then you take that the grace of God in your life imputation impartation the implication of your life in the office there's no girl in your home there's no girl with your friend there's no girl with man you don't fear any man to the point that you have to tell a lie you have to have you know some girl you have to have some hypocrisy you have to have some alteration of truth and so that you will not get into trouble the implication of imputation and impartation in your life is that there is no girl and those are the people when the trumpet sounds and the dead are raised incorruptible then we shall be changed and transformed and we shall go with the lord in jesus Amen. We come to point number three now, and that is restoration of the lost riches of full salvation. We're looking at Psalm 1, and I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 51, we're reading now from verse 1. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out, cleanse out, remove totally, uh, blot out my transgressions. And then in verse 2, it says, Wash me, cleanse me purge me wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin you see david was sincere he wasn't he wasn't confessing Bathsheba's sin he wasn't confessing Joab's sin he wasn't confessing Absalom's sin he said this is me if you're going to get saved this is you if you're going to have initial salvation ongoing salvation full salvation final salvation 
Christian, you must be personal, you must be sincere, you must be transparent before the Lord. And David was so transparent that he prayed, he forgot, he forgot duty, he forgot royalty, he forgot everything and said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. And then he says in verse 3, in verse 3 he says, for I acknowledge my transgression. Not my wife's transgression, not my husband's transgression, not my neighbor's transgression, not the publican's transgression. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And then in verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, against thee and thee only. Yes, I sinned against the Orion, I sinned against the nation, but the ultimate sin against thee and thee only. Have I sin and done this evil. He didn't uh, paint it with another color. He didn't try to modify it. He didn't try to give excuse. He didn't, that, he didn't try to say, well, yes, that happened. But you know, there are people that do uh, worse things in life. It is, he didn't gloss over it. He said, against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges and then it says in verse 5 in verse 5 behold i was shapen in iniquity it said actually it's like the depravity was still there it's like the nature of sin was still there i was shapen in iniquity and in it sin did my mother conceive me it tells us in verse 6 in verse 6 behold thou desirest truth in the inward part transparency from the inward part pure truth from the inward part no adjustment no alteration no pretense thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me thou shalt make me know wisdom and then in verse 7 it says in verse 7 purge me with Esau and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow verse 6 tells us in verse 8 make me to hear joy and gladness that that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice and then in verse 9 it says in verse 9 hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities look at verse 10 in verse 10 create in me clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me create inside me a new heart a clean heart a pure heart a cleansed heart and renew a right spirit within me and then in verse 11 in verse 11 he says cast me not away from thy presence take not thy holy spirit from me verse 12 then says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit it says only then in verse 13 then will i teach transgressors thy ways i don't want to have guilt in my heart and then keep on preaching i don't want to have condemnation in my mind and then keep on preaching i don't want to be speaking from my head the gospel of truth and the truth of the gospel what the guilt that I'm walking against the truth, the guilt is ravaging my heart, and the guilt is a kind of oppressing my heart, and then I subdue that, and then with the mouth I'm giving out the word which is going to be shallow and which God will not present, but Lord have cleansed me and purged me and purified me and you have created in me a new heart then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. If your life is not right, if there is evil, if there is guile, if there is hypocrisy if there's pretense if the impartation of 
righteousness is not in your life you might teach you might preach you might do whatever but sinners will not be converted unto the Lord but David was sincere David came to the Lord and David said take all this away from me and create a new heart a clean heart in my heart and then after you have restored the fullness of your salvation the joy of salvation the peace in salvation the victory in salvation the righteousness in salvation after that has been done then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee let's look at three things here number one the restoration of being washed from all sins the restoration after being washed from all sins number two the realization of becoming whiter than snow through sanctification the realization that you can be as white as snow that's salvation you can be as white as snow that's a redemption reconciliation with god and then you can go a step further in sanctification and you can be whiter than snow it purges you it cleanses you it perfects you that you are whiter than snow through sanctification and then the recovery of the boundless wonders of thy spirit the recovery of the boundless wonders of thy spirit let's come to number one in number one we're reading from psalm 51 verses 1 and 2 psalm 51 look at verse 1 it says in verse 1 have mercy upon me it's not by merit salvation it's not by works salvation is not by the merit by what you have done by the good works you have done by the money you have given here is only the mercy of god have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions and then in verse 2 it tells us wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin it tells us in isaiah chapter 1 reading from verse 16 isaiah chapter 1 look at verse 16 here wash you and make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil and then verse 17 learn in verse 17 it says learn to do well seek judgment seek justice relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless plead for the widows and then in verse 18 it says come now and let us reason together says the lord after repentance after you are penitent after you confess and forsake your sin, after you are deeply sorry and the contrition for sin, after you promise the Lord, forgive me, save me from this, I will not continue in that anymore. Any moment of my life, every moment of my life will be given to honoring you. After that, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Salvation they shall be as white as snow and though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool and look at uh, first corinthians chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 9 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 uh, it says know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god no, you're not. Whatever our profession, whatever our testimony, whatever the date were given, I was saved, I was sanctified, I was served the Holy Ghost, I became this, I became that. Life is what matters. What comes out of your character is what matters. No, you're not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind and then in verse 10 it says no thieves there are people that steal money other people steal clothes 
other people steal a position other people steal the authority that belongs to other people no thieves no covetous no drunkards no revilers no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god look at the beauty of cleansing and washing and regeneration in verse 11 in verse 11 i says and such was some of you but ye are washed but ye are washed the restoration the regeneration the salvation that comes as we are washed from all our sins titus chapter 3 we're looking at verse 5 in titus chapter 3 reading here from verse 5 it says not by the works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us look at this by the washing of regeneration that's salvation by the washing of regeneration that's redemption by the washing of regeneration and that's the time we came to the lord and he took our sins away not imputing our guilt our unrighteousness on us but now he takes everything away by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the holy ghost in verse 6 he tells us in verse 6 which is shared on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior and then in verse 7 in verse 7 it says that being justified by his grace he looks at us after forgiving us after imputing righteousness unto us he looks at us as if we have never sinned after repentance after faith in christ after cleansing after washing after the spirit of god bears witness of our hearts we're not children of god we're justified and all the sins of the past they are forgiven and forgotten being justified by his grace that we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life washing from iniquity and washing us to be white as snow that's salvation let's come back to psalm we're coming back to psalm 51 in psalm 51 we're looking at verses 6 and 7 and verse 10 in psalm 51 looking at verse 6 it says behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts you understand god does not look as man looketh for man at the outward expression but God looks on the heart God does not look only at I don't steal I don't commit adultery I don't commit fornication those are outward things he looks at the heart he looks at the intention in the heart he looks at the purpose of the heart he looks at the motive in the heart he looks at the demonstration and the manifestation of his righteousness from the heart thou desirest truth in the inward part and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom look at verse 7 in verse 7 purge me here is sincere prayer he knew what was inside him he knew the thoughts inside him he knew the profligacy he knew the of defilement inside is sad and he says my heart is the issue and i come to you now I pardon the spirit of heart after he has taken your sins away he has taken the guilt away you come to him for the second work of grace and he purges you purge me with iso and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 talks about white as snow salvation and now he talks about becoming whiter than snow in verse 10 in verse 10 it says creating me a clean heart creating me not a polluted heart that is always leaning towards pollution 
a defiled heart leaning towards defilement not a dirty heart leaning towards dirt not an hypocritical heart leaning towards hypocrisy create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me that was his prayer in the new testament we have that kind of experience that he tells us in ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 ephesians chapter 5 looking at verse 26 he said that he might sanctify and cleanse each or the washing of water by the word and then in verse 27 it says in verse 27 that he might present it unto himself a glorious church a glorious sage in a glorious assembly a glorious christian in a glorious church a sanctified christian in a rapturable church and he sanctifies us it takes the adamic nature away. and it is not just sanctification on paper sanctification in doctrine sanctification in experience that he Christ, the sanctifying Christ might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle that's the mark of the old nature the mark of the old man you see when a man is getting old old and older you begin to see those wrinkles and here paul is using that illustration here that there are wrinkles of the old nature the wrinkles of the old man but it says when i'm purged when i'm perfected when i'm cleansed when i'm sanctified when i'm holding and when i go through that cleansing blood that purifying blood the second time after salvation that he will make me a glorious christian part of a glorious church not having spot not having wrinkle or any sort of sin but that it should be holy and without blemish the lord will accomplish it in our lives Amen. in your life in my life in the life of every one of our people in jesus name will not only preach it will possess it will not only declare it will demonstrate it will not only say our church preaches holiness our church declares holiness but we will demonstrate it everywhere and every time and in all our actions whether we're in church or we're in the family or we're with neighbors or we're in the office will demonstrate that holiness we declare on the pulpit in jesus name Amen. because there's the realization there's the experience of becoming whiter than snow through sanctification actually that is what prepares us for heaven we're looking at first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 22 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 it says abstain from all appearance of evil anything you do that maybe you say is not evil but other people are looking at it and they're, they're saying that appears to be evil that appears to be God that appears to be hypocrisy that appears to be seen that appears to be lost abstain from all appearance of evil and it says in verse 23 that the very god of peace sanctify you how the very god of peace sanctify you wholly completely entirely and perfectly and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved tell me blameless. tell me tell me blameless. blameless until the coming of our lord jesus christ can he do it i said will he do it verse 24 it says it says faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it faithful is he that calleth you he will do it and as he does it he makes us ready for the coming of the lord he makes us ready for the rapture in revelation chapter 19 verse 7 revelation chapter 19 we're reading here from verse 7 it says verse 7 let us be glad and rejoice 
and give honor to him for the marriage supper for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready how washed He's getting ready and then wash whiter than snow getting ready saved and sanctified pure purified and perfected his wife has made herself ready and then in verse 8 says and to her was granted that she should be arranged in fine linen cleaner and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints the lord accomplish it in all our hearts all our lives all our members all our ministers in jesus name we'll come back now to psalm 51 in psalm 51 we're looking from verse 10 some 51 we're reading from verse 10 says create in me a clean heart O God and then after that clean heart renew a right spirit within me renew a right spirit within me the Holy Spirit is the right spirit the Holy Spirit is a righteous spirit the Holy Spirit is a reviving spirit the Holy Spirit is the Spirit that leads us aright and conducts us aright and every decision we make, every guidance we have, it is by that right Spirit He leads us in the right way, renew in me a right Spirit. And then He tells us in verse 11, in verse 11 He says, Cast me not away from Thy presence and take not Thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The power of the Holy Spirit, the possibilities in the Holy Spirit, the provision of the Holy Spirit, the courage and the strength in the Holy Spirit, and the perception of the Holy Spirit, and the backbone understanding that the Holy Spirit gives. Give that to me again, that I will know that the Holy Spirit is infilling me, is saturating me, and is making me the man and the minister and the king and the royalty that I ought to be take not thy Holy Spirit from me and then he tells us in verse 12 he says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me strengthen me make me keep on standing uphold me with thy free spirit the recovery of the boundless wonders of the spirit you understand when we're saved we're saved and the spirit of god bears witness when we're sanctified we're sanctified and the holy spirit has part in that sanctification and when we're filled with the holy ghost enveloped in the holy ghost the spirit of god has part in that and when he leads us on and guides us on and begins to fulfill the ministry of the spirit in our lives the holy spirit is involved all the way through look at john chapter 3 verse 5 in john chapter 3 verse 5 here jesus said verily verily i say unto you except him and be born of water and of the spirit and of the spirit born of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god it tells us in verse 7 in verse 7 it says marvel not that i said unto thee ye must be born again and then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 the wind blew it where it listed and then thou hearest the sound thereof and canst not tell from whence it cometh whither and whither it goeth look at this so is everyone that is born of the spirit the spirit of god is involved in our salvation we cannot overlook we cannot really we cannot relegate the holy ghost to the background and say we want to be born again and then in our sanctification it tells us in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 first thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 13 it tells us about the part the holy spirit plays in our sanctification as well it says for this cause also so thank we God without ceasing because when you receive God when that word of God came to you at the first time he says you receive that word which ye heard of us ye received it not as the word of men but 
as it is in truth the word of God which effectually works in you that believe that word will continue working effectually in every one of us in Jesus name Amen. second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 in second Thessalonians chapter 2 reading here from verse 13 but we are about to give thanks always give thanks always to God for you brethren I pray that we'll give thanks for you always in Jesus when we look at uh, your receptivity of the word when we look at your life at your character when we look at the impact of the word in your life and when we look at the testimony that other people are giving concerning you that the word is working mightily in him mightily in her and every time everywhere you go the word is at work in you and no matter when you are alone when you are with other people the word is working mightily in you those of us who know you and those of us who have been prepared to minister unto you will be giving thanks unto God always for you brethren be Lord of the Lord because that God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation look at this through sanctification of the spirit and believe of the truth sanctification of the spirit capital s there and believe of the truth we we'll come to romans chapter 8 verse 2 after we're saved and then we're even sanctified and the spirit of god is involved in all that from day to day every area of our life the spirit of god is also involved and he tells us for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free is the law of the spirit the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made me free from the law of sin and death and then he tells us in verse 11 in verse 11 it says but if the spirit capital S the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body this it will revive your mortal bodies it will heal your mortal body it will empower energize your mortal body in jesus name it says he that raised up jesus christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you and he tells us in romans chapter uh, chapter 8 reading from verse 17 in verse 17 it says and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together glory in your life glory in your experiences and the lord will lift you up from the level of degradation to the height of glory in jesus name and then you're familiar with this acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 4 acts of the apostles chapter 1 we're reading from verse 4 it says in verse 4 i'm being assembled to Together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. He wants us to wait before the Lord. He wants us to tarry before the Lord. He wants us to be patient in the sight of the Lord. He wants us to value the power of the Holy Ghost so much that we pray and we pray until that assurance has come and that experience has come and the power of the Holy Ghost infills us, saturates us and we're able to move on in our personal lives, in our ministries, in the power of God. It takes waiting, it takes being patient in the sight of the Lord but wait for the promise of the Father which says he ye have heard of me and then in verse 5 in verse 5 it says for John truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence if you wait not many days hence if you tarry if you pray with faith and you're holding on to the promise of God it says you'll be filled you'll be enveloped you'll be empowered you'll be strengthened you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since and then it says in verse 8 in verse 8 it tells us but he shall receive power I will receive power 
I said I will receive power I see somebody is hungry and he wants to eat and then the food is being prepared and then he will not wait and the food is now ready it's not there and he carries his hunger about and then by the time he comes back we'll finish the food and then the food comes again every time of the service every time we come in the presence of the Lord instead of waiting and waiting and praying that's why many people they're coming so many times and they're not born again many people have been coming so many times and they have not been sanctified many people have been coming so many times and they have not been filled and baptized and empowered in the Holy Ghost because they refuse to wait and they refuse to count precious the promise of the Lord them until they are baptized in the Holy Ghost but it says he shall receive power I will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth the Lord do that and empower every one of us in Jesus name Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 39 Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 39 it says for the promise is unto you what is today? I said what the promise today. I said what's the promise today? For the promise is unto you and to your children, even to your converse, and to all that are far off, even as many as God at the Lord our God shall call. At the Lord our God shall call. The Lord Himself will give us the fullness of the Spirit the power of the spirit the outpouring of the spirit in jesus name yeah. you see abel yeah. i said you see abel yes. if ephesians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 20. ephesians chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 20. it says in ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able is the lord now to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that power will work in you that power will work in your soul will work in your spirit according to the power that worketh in us now unto him now unto the lord now unto god that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everything you ask the lord is able to do everything you meditate on you think about the lord is able to do every promise you claim today the lord is able to do every promise you are holding on to and you're saying lord your promise is for me it will be yours today Amen. salvation available today Amen. restoration available today Amen. sanctification available today Amen. healing deliverance available today Amen. the fulfillment of the promise of god available today Amen. the power of the holy ghost in baptismal measure available today Amen trying to carry all the load you have to carry available today yeah. available for you available for your family available for everyone today in your life in jesus name yeah. now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us what's the power going to work today I said, where is the power going to work today? I'm watching you and I see that that power will work in your life in Jesus' name. God is able. I said, God is able. Our Lord is able. And this is the time. Look at everything that we've learned as we've gone through those three Psalms 31, 32, and 51. Look at what is able to do. It's going to work in your life now without any restraint and without any restriction in Jesus' name. And let's rise up now and we're going to take that to the Lord in prayer. We're going to we're going to really pray, really pray from the depth of your heart. Like the psalmist came to the Lord and he prayed from the depth 
of his heart and it wasn't just uh, you know buying time or bidding time or waiting for uh, you know Nathan to come and pray for him uh, but he himself took that word to the Lord in prayer he took his heart he took his life he took everything to the Lord in prayer and the Lord answered his prayer open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer He has for redemption for us. Reconciliation with God. Check up your heart. Check up your life. If the Lord were to come at this time. You have the clear conscience, cleansed conscience. The Spirit of God bearing witness with your heart that all is well, everything is all right. You trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, confidence in the Lord, faith in the Lord. He said he will forgive. You trust him. He said he will cleanse. You trust him. He said he make saints out of you. You will not remain a sinner. Your focus will be on pleasing the Lord. The trust Him is the truth of God abiding in your heart. Truth without error. Truth without hypocrisy. Truth without alteration. Is that truth from the Lord in your heart? Truth, truthfulness, your speech, your interactions, your relationships, the truth of the Lord in your heart. My times are in the hand of the Lord. Time of childhood. Let your time be in the hand of the Lord. Time of youth. Let that time be in the hand of the Lord. Time of trouble. Come to the Lord. Think of the Lord. Time of pain. Sickness. For that time, the hand of God, time of affliction, time of persecution, keep on looking up to the Lord. My times are in the hand of the Lord. Time of wrath, time of indignation. Time of old age until the time of departure. My times are in the hand of the Lord. You walk as in His presence every time, trusting Him, leaning on Him, believing in Him, praying unto Him holding on to the promise of God, walking, living transparently before the Lord. My times are in thine hand. And when we're truly penitent, he imputes his righteousness on us, 
it takes the guilt away takes condemnation away breaks the yoke and the power of cancel sin and it makes us walk like Christ talk like Christ behave like Christ always looking at the face of the Father sincere simply holy pure perfect not allowing any moment to be used by the devil in his life overcoming every temptation and that righteousness of Christ can be imparted unto you imputed imparted the implication is that there will be no girl in your life you will not have an excuse for deliberate falsehood deliberate lying hypocritical presentation whether you are in the house of God the office of a man no God no falsehood you will live transparently don't confess other people's sins confess and forsake your own sin live to fear his name live to honor his name live to exalt him live to uphold the transparent experience of holiness and sanctification wash me wash me thoroughly as white as snow whiter than snow oh the riches of salvation full salvation restore all the resources of heaven what individuals have lost restore what the church has lost restore what is promised in your word that this is what you will do Lord restore wait on the Lord again I say wait on the Lord now strengthen your heart It'll empower you you'll fulfill his great good gracious promises in your life you will experience his power afresh The righteousness of the Lord will saturate your life. The power of the Spirit will envelope your life.
they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They're on, they'll not be weary, they'll walk, they'll not faint. Wait on the Lord. Tarry in His presence. Pray with importunity. Let there be a change, a transformation of heart, of life, ministry, everything. Remember imputation. Believe that. Remember impartation. Believe that. And remember the implication of true righteousness, heavenly righteousness, God given righteousness, righteousness of faith. In our lives now no guile no falsehood no pretense no hypocrisy no evil no sin no spot no wrinkle It makes us to reflect the very life of Christ. I remember God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us able able to save able able to restore backsliders able able to infuse his righteousness in our lives able able to sanctify able to make holy able to reproduce the life of Christ transparent holy life in every one of us able able to empower us able to envelope us in the Holy Spirit and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto Christ both in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Father, we thank you and bless your name for your word. Thank you for people, believers of old, who trusted in you, like David, like Abraham, like all those worthies of old. And they actually walked by faith, they lived by faith. We pray, O oh Lord. The same good thing you did in them, do everything in us in Jesus' name. Amen. All those who have confessed and forsaken their sins and they have come in repentance, come in penitence, and they have come seeking the face of the Lord for real salvation, for definite experience of regeneration, and for the definite experience of 
turning around transformation of life i pray lord you answer their prayers with definite experience of salvation in jesus name i pray for those who know that they were backsliding and they have come back unto you and they want to now live a life that carries your righteousness a life that demonstrates your righteousness a life that declares your righteousness i pray lord as you have promised to restore that joy of salvation that victory of salvation that righteousness of salvation and that witness of salvation restore to those backsliders in jesus name <laughs> And Lord will pray definite genuine experience of walking with you of being washed as white as snow being washed whiter than snow grant unto everyone in Jesus name you are able able to save you are able able to sanctify you are able able to empower I will pray Lord those who have been saved and sanctified but they have not waited enough they have not prayed enough they have not believed enough they have not thirsted enough they have not been passionate after you to have the power and the baptism of the holy ghost in their lives lord i pray you grant them the grace to ask in faith and you empower everyone with the holy ghost in jesus name I pray that all the resources of the Spirit, all the riches of the Spirit, and all the strength of the Spirit, all the standing that He gives us when we're filled and saturated and baptized in the Holy Ghost, give unto everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. The guidance of the Spirit, the illumination of the Spirit, the inspiration of the Spirit, and the energy of the Spirit, and the quickening of the Spirit, the guidance and everything, revelation of the Holy Ghost, give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. I will pray that even after this service, getting back home, we'll wait on the Lord. We'll tarry before the Lord. And everything we've heard of today, everything that you have revealed to us in today you pour upon your people in jesus name transparent holy living triumphant holy living until there is no girl there's no pretense there's no hypocrisy and there is uh, no shallow superficial kind of behavior or character grant us that transparent triumphant life in jesus name I will pray that everything we have asked in prayer, those who need healing, those who need deliverance, and those who need the touch of God in their lives, do it for everyone. Amen. I will pray, Lord, the riches of the kingdom will carry away with us in our heart, in our soul, in our spirit, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Anywhere we are, help us to stand like real children of God. Amen washed and cleansed and purged and purified and empowered all the way through in jesus name Amen. be glorified in every life Amen. we pray lord that nobody will go away from the service empty-handed do something new in every life Amen. something fresh in every life Amen. something mighty and powerful in every life Amen. and put testimony in every mouth Amen. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And I give people once again another amen. Great all our people and those who are not able to come. I know that they have the message, uh, you know, as they're connected, but I'm eager to see their face. Next time, I'll see you and your family you and your children Amen. children god bless you wherever you are pastor loves you and pastor is thinking of you i'll see you in jesus name Amen. thank you everyone <laughs>